coming up next on the spot. Yakuza creator Toshihiro Nagoshi drops by to show off his latest game, Binary Domain. And with the holidays creeping closer, we think it's time to recommend some games for your favorite relative, friend, pet, spouse, whoever. Basically, if you know people who play games, we've got a game for them, so stay tuned. We're live and on the spot. Hey folks, and welcome to the GameSpot Studios where we are live and on the spot. I got some very special guests here today, here to show off an exciting game scheduled to come out next year called Binary Domain. Joining me on the couch is Nagoshi-san, producer on Binary Domain and famed for his work on the Yakuza series, as well as Yaz Noguchi, producer from Sega, here to translate for Nagoshi-san. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having us. We're, uh, we're excited to check out Binary Domain. I've been watching a lot of the trailers we have on the site, but for folks who are unfamiliar, could you please give them just a brief introduction so that they have context for what they're going to see today? Binary Domain, I've been talking about Binary Domain, but I'm going to explain the details of the game. What do you think about the game now? I've been talking about the game for 2080, so I've been talking about the game in Tokyo. So I've been looking at it. So uh, the the game is, is set in uh, a near future, the year 2080, and it's a science fiction themed uh, third person shooter. Uh, I think the picture's uh, worth a thousand words. Uh, we'll be showing you a lot of gameplay today. Excellent. And so we clearly see third person shooter action going on here, jumping behind cover and fighting what appear to be robotic enemies. Uh, mm -hmm. Robots factor heavily into this game. It's part of the core narrative concept and your primary enemy. Can we? Talk a little bit about that robot's role in the world of binary domain. まああの今回のまあ今のゲームで明らかにあの敵がロボットみたいな兵兵器の兵士がいますけど、そのロボットの役割ゲーム内のストーリーとかについてちょっと簡単に説明お願いしますか。そうですね。えっとまあその時代にはロボット産業がすごく発達していて、人間社会に役立つロボットがたくさんできているんですけど、その中でまあその。ロボットとは関係ない、まあ要は人間同士のそのいろんな思惑で。人間に歯向かうロボットが生まれてきてと、まあそう、そういう、そういうロボットたちが今回。主なエネミーになります。in the future in the in the world of binary domain。there are definitely helpful beneficial robots。robots that are beneficial to the human race。and at the same time there are also these。uh more or less weapons or uh。uh robots that are essentially。In the service of uh, men's different wills or their uh, evil or good agenda, so that's mm -hmm. the the story uh, is basically uh, uh, kind of heavily plays into that. Now these enemies are sort of humanoid robots, uh, but they come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, but what I'm seeing here, and I'm sure the viewers are noticing, is the way that limbs are coming off and legs are coming off of the robots when they get shot, but they still keep crawling, they still keep fighting. That's very cool. まああのいろんなロボットはまあゲーム内にあると思うんですけど、あのまああの画面上ではまあいろんなパーツのところが壊れたりとかですごいやる気するかっこいいかっこいいと思います。まあそのまあ V 破壊というかそういうパーツがどう壊れていくか、またそのエネミーのウィークポイントをどう撃破していくかというところにもそれは攻略にもつながっていく。So that's one of the things that we've paid a, quite a bit of attention to when we uh, developed the game is that uh, by uh, targeting specific areas like weak points or even like specific parts of the limb, uh, you can definitely have different strategic ways of defeating your enemy. And now it looks like we are the ones close to defeat here, uh, but we're, the player is down but not out here, as we can see just expertly taking out a, a robot there. You're, there's a team dynamic in binary domain. You're not fighting alone. How does that? How does the di team dynamic work? Ah, まああの今のシーンではまああの明らかにあのまあ倒れてましたけどまだ戦闘できるという可能可能でまああのゲーム内ではまあチームという形であのまあ戦闘していると思いますけどそのチーム性についてあの説明をいただけますか。最初はまだこの段階ではあの一緒に。東京に潜入してきた、えー、海元かあの米軍兵士2人だけなんですけどそのうちいろんな仲間と出会っていて、えー、最大人間以外のロボットも含めて5人の仲間をと一緒に出会うんですけど
その5人の仲間からそのミッションに応じて、えー、プレイヤーが2位に、えー、何人かの、えー、仲間を連れて、えー、行動する一瞬だったり。So, this is still at the sort of the beginning of the game.、Uh, so, there are only、uh, two members of the team right now that you see.、Um, and these guys here on screen,、um, they're、uh, basically ex American military soldiers,、uh, and they've just infiltrated、uh, Tokyo. And as you play the game,、uh, you'll meet up to five different characters that uh, uh, will essentially you can enlist to fight alongside you as you go through the game. It certainly seems like some more soldiers could be helpful.、Um, And I really liked that、uh, just a moment ago when the robot had no legs but was still crawling,、uh, still trying to kill you no matter what.、Uh, we're seeing,、um, you know, he's shooting bullets. It's an, an assault rifle that he appears to be wielding. But there was a moment when he,、uh, we have Sam demoing off screen here, he charged up what looked like a blue energy attack.、Uh, can, We talk about the weapons in binary domain and what different kinds of abilities people can have. Assault rifle is a melee weapon. 吐き出すようなそういう未来感あふれる武器もありますしまたその同じ、まあ、例えばグレネード系にしても敵の惑わし方にしても、まあ、ユニークなものも結構含まれているのでそこは本当他のゲームにないユニークな武器もたくさんあると思います。So we have the type of、uh, weapons that you might expect the, like current contemporary uh, uh, today you know the military uses like assault rifles and machine guns and whatnot but we do have also futuristic weapons like uh, energy uh, uh, weapons that the player can use along with、uh, Uh, your full complement of, for example, uh, uh, like say、uh, grenades.、Um, also, we do have other sort of cool gadgets in the, in,、uh, in the, in the game that will enable you to sort of uh, uh, fight a, a real cool strategic、uh, battle against the, the robots. I like it. And、uh, it, this,、uh, this area is very dark. It's a rainstorm, it's nighttime.、Um, but I was watching in the, in the trailer that we have posted on the site. This world actually has two different strata. It has a city that is affluent and rich that exists above the city that is downtrodden and poor. Where are we in the world right now, and where, where are some places that we go? そうですね、仮想からスラムからこう上層のリッチな都市にまあだんだん行ってさらにまた奥に行くという感じになるんですけどまさに今回は本当にバイナリーという単語のようにスラムと上層善と悪とかロボットと機械と人間とかその、まあ、これは本当に一例であってさまざまな二面性というものがテーマになっているので、まあ、このステージの。So, as, as far as the, the world is concerned,、uh, right now we're kind of going through the slum district, and as, as we go、uh, through the game, we will actually go into the more affluent areas, so、uh, areas that, are look, that look you know, much, much nicer than what we have here. And the, the part of the reason why we've done that is,、um, as the name suggests, binary. We were kind of looking at the duality or That, that there are two sides of everything.、Uh, there's good, evil, human robots, and so on and so forth. And、uh, the, you know, we've, we've also basically employed that as well into the, the level design. Excellent. I like that thematic sort of resonance between you know, the game world and, and the, the title as well. And also the binary of human and robot, which it seems. is being blurred as there are humanoid robots fighting.、Uh, you know, these aren't. I'm not seeing big spidery robots, but are, do we get more abstract with the kind of enemies we see? Well, I think the concept is very interesting to me. But I think the concept is very interesting to me. I think the concept is very interesting to me. I think the concept is very interesting to me. 
イメージ的にはその戦車のさらに数倍のような巨大なものもありますしただそれも全てあのプログラミングで今回のロボットってあの基本的に動いているのでえいわゆるパターンチェンジで動いているわけではなくて AI とあのそういう自律的に全てのプログラミングで動いているというのが特徴的ですそれが本当に息づいているようなモーションを見せ,見せてくれるのも注目してほしいです。So, as far as the variety, we do have, like, for example, these big, huge, towering、uh, robots that, if you can imagine, they're like big, huge, like tanks, for example.、Mm-hmm. And one of the cool aspects that、uh, we've done in、uh, binary domain is that a lot of the Uh, in fact, all, the, the AI the, for the, the enemies, they're not scripted. They're not pre scripted at all. In fact, so the AI kind of、um, operates on its own.、Uh-huh. So uh, that's uh, something, a feature that we、uh, like to、uh, you know, point out, and that I think、uh, when people pick up the game, they'll really enjoy. Yeah, it's, I mean, we've even been able to see with the enemies we've been fighting so far how. Even enemies of the same type vary in what they're doing and how they're attacking you, and also depending on where you're shooting, they will do something different. It's very cool.、Uh, now, we just saw a quick brief glimpse at shopping, and the whole time we've been killing robots, we've been earning credits. What, what is the deal with the currency system and presumably upgrades and new guns? So, you may have shopping in the menu that day, but so the game was on the top credit or Cassan Saremaskido. So, no system, no Yakuari, you see the system in the game. So, my Korea set ten and this girl, my Karela no Kuwa, a safe car, Okurikumare, a Yohe Nano, the Karela and Kakia Kutuna, my sweet Kandi Sarati. In terms of how that figures into the,、uh, the game, is that these guys are more or less hired guns uh, by uh, government agencies. So as they go through the mission and、uh, destroy enemies or clear missions, they essentially earn money and they can use that for shopping. I really like that robot that doesn't have a foot but is still hopping on his leg bone. That's, it's really impressive what you guys have done so far with these animations. Yeah, so that is just an example of literally the AI doing its thing and it's not prescripted at all. <laughs> Do you ever get surprised watching when you see something different happen or something unexpected and you say, oh, I wasn't, wasn't expecting that? In the game, the play of the game, the game is not the same as the game. What do you think about the game? I'm going to take a action and take a look at the game. I'm going to take a look at the game. とりあえずパターンチェンジじゃなくなると本当にゲームシーンが一通りでなくなる、まあ、本当にいろんなことが起きる人にのゲームプレイによってそれは本当に本当はプレイヤーによって画面の個性が出るのはゲームいいゲームだと僕は思ってるのでそういうゲームだと思います。Uh, from, from his perspective, I think what, the way he likes it, to sort of think of the game is that it really sort of, the, the, the way what you see on screen is really dependent upon your gameplay style.、Mm-hmm. So,、uh, depending on how you play, if you're really aggressive or if you're kind of, you know,、uh, kind of a wallflower, it, it really depends,、uh, it really changes the battle situation or the way, way really uh, the, the, the combat uh, uh, plays out on screen. So, I, I think、uh, from that perspective,、uh, he thinks that, he, that his team did a really good job of、uh, making this game. It's certainly looking great so far. And、uh, before we wrap up, there's one more element that I wanted to talk about.、Uh, folks have probably noticed、oh, the opportunity to press L2 and use voice commands.、Uh, talk just a little bit about the interaction you can have talking to your teammates in the game. アイコンが出ましたけど、ちょっとそれも機能について説明いただけないでしょうか。そうですね。えっとまあ、それで同行する仲間とは常に会話をすることができます。まあその突撃するとか、はい、援護するとか。ただそれ以外にも実は、えー、全く関係ない世間話のようなこともお互いすることもできるので、それは本当にボイスコマンドという会話の楽しさ、緊張感、両方楽しんでもらえるように。僕は、うん、お願いしたいですね
so um, what we in the game we have voice recognition in, uh, inside the uh, implemented in the game, integrated in the game, mm -hmm. and uh, you can issue your typical like combat commands like uh, cover me or uh, attack or uh, fall back. But in addition to that, uh, we've our uh, voice recognition, in, uh, the way we implement it, we also have uh, stuff that's completely has nothing to do with combat. Like, so as you're like walking around, you can actually ha have a conversation uh, with uh, the, your, your partner characters or the characters that team up with you in the game. So that's a really, uh, we think it's a really compelling feature that uh, gives a lot of value and a lot of uh, fun as you play the game. Well, we're certainly have enjoyed the look at Binary Domain right here and are looking forward to seeing more. Um, for folks at home who are interested, can you tell us when Binary Domain is scheduled to come out and on what platforms they can play it? あの、あの、あの、で、もう期待非常にあの期待しております。で、あの発売日とどどのあのプラットフォームであの、あの発売されるのかあの紹介お願いできますでしょうか。え、2012年の2月にえ、PS3と、え、Xbox 3360、え、PS3、え、we're、uh、the uh, Nagoshi-san, yes, thank you so much for coming in and showing off Binary Domain and giving our viewers a look at this exciting game. Thank you. Folks, we are now going to toss it over to a starting block for Skyrim. It's not quite a starting block, but it's more as we've been giving you pro tips on how to get some of the more valuable and uh, powerful artifacts in the game. Here comes another one and to help you rule the roost in Skyrim. Hey there everybody, Curtis Said here and I'm going to show you how to get all the Dragon Priest masks in Skyrim. There's a total of 10 masks, 8 of which are named after their masters, and you get them by killing each of the Dragon Priests. The Priests are found close by Words of Power, entombed like any other Draugr. There's also a wooden mask that you'll need, but to get the very last Dragon Priest mask, Conric, you'll need to kill all 8 Dragon Priests and acquire their masks in addition to the wooden mask. The Dragon Priests are all magic casters with no form of melee attacks. If you deplete their source of magicka with either your own lightning spells or a very powerful damage magicka poison, they'll be unable to counterattack. First up is the Volsung Mask. It gives you the bonuses of 20% better prices, 20 more carrying capacity, and gives you the ability to breathe underwater. It can be found after defeating the Dragon Priest Volsung, and he can be found when you reach the end of the dungeon, Volskig. This dungeon is located southwest of Lost Echo Cave and Fort Harogstead. If you don't feel like going through the dungeon, you can climb up the mountain where the entrance to Volskig is located. You might want to take this option, as there are fairly annoying traps inside the dungeon. Next is the Vokan Mask. The Dragon Priest Vokan can be found in the Highgate Ruins located in the Pale. The mask has conjuration, illusion effects, and alteration spells costing 20% less to cast. Inside the dungeon, you'll meet Anska and start a quest to locate her lost scroll. The scroll I'm looking for just has to be here. Maybe you could help find it. I just know it's in here. This powerful spellcaster will be helpful in taking out the enemies. But just make sure she doesn't start beating on your own followers. After the battle, you can even gain a ward of power. Wrath, Stormcall. The Otar Mask is worn by Otar the Mad in Ragnvall Temple. The Otar Mask is classified as Heavy Armor and has a base rating of 26. The mask is 30% resistant against fire, frost, and shock. Your goal in Ragnvall is to collect two skull-shaped keys, one on the north and one on the south sides of the dungeon. These will unlock a gate to the west, where the Dragon Priest awaits. The Rogat Mask increases your stamina by 70 points. Ragot is located at the end of the Four Holst Dungeon, which you'll encounter while on the quest, Siege on the Dragon Colt. Four Holst is found southeast of Riften, and directly west of Broken Helm Hollow. Ragot is pretty easy to kill, especially if you get a weapon with an enchantment that drains magicka. 
Just watch out for all his undead helpers. The Dragon Priest Hevnarok, also known as Hevnarok the Mad, can be found in Volthum Dungeon, in the Reach Hold. Inside the dungeon, you'll meet with the spirit of Voldar and start the quest Evil in Waiting. Hunt down the three vessels inside the dungeon to summon the Dragon Priest. The mask has a base armor of 25 and makes you immune to disease and poison. The fifth mask is the Krosis Mask. It is considered light armor with a base of 30 and gives 20% bonus to lockpicking, archery, and alchemy. Krosis the Dragon Priest can be found at Shearpoint. This location is outside on an open hill, so you won't need to trek through another dank cave. However, a perch dragon is guarding the area. If you want to avoid a large headache, kill this dragon before getting close to the word wall. Otherwise, you'll be facing both the Dragon Priest and his pet at the same time. Don't forget to check out the word wall before leaving, as it contains all three words of power for throw voice. Voice, full, and far. The Nacron Mask can only be found during the World Eater's Eerie. This is during the Alduin quest line, part of the main storyline, immediately prior to entering the portal to Sovngarde. The Dragon Priest Nacron can be found at the end of Skaldafin Dungeon. When attacking Nacron, he'll walk up the stairs and take the Dragon Priest Staff, which will stop the portal. If you can prevent him from taking the staff, he won't even have a means of attacking you. Once he's dead, pick up his Nacron Mask and the Staff to enable the portal again. The Mask gives you 50 Magicka, and Destruction and Restoration spells cost 20% less. The last Dragon Priest you have to face is Moroki. You can get Moroki's Mask during the College of Winterhold questline at Labyrinthian. The mask will give you 100% Magicka regeneration. If you're not a member of the Mages College already, it's time to get enrolled and brush up on the curriculum. You'll need to complete five more Mage quests before you can continue your search for Moroki. Once Maribel Irvine tasks you with locating the Staff of Magnus, you'll have the means of entering the depths of Labyrinthian. Make sure you've mastered a few different types of powerful destructive magic, as the traps inside can be deadly if not disarmed. Finally, when all eight Dragon Priests are defeated, Players can go find the Wooden Mask. The mask is found after entering Bromjumar Sanctuary, inside Labyrinthian. You'll find the mask sitting around the skeletal remains. Equipping the mask takes the player back into the past to reveal the true Dragon Priest Shrine. Once in the Dragon Priest Shrine, you'll see the eight busts of the Dragon Priest that you've defeated. Place the eight masks in the respective slots to unlock the tenth and final mask, Conoric. The Conoric Mask has some interesting traits. When you're low on health, the mask can knock back enemies, heal you, but also damage nearby allies. This can also grant a fire cloak for a brief time. Plus, on very rare occasions, the mask will summon up a spectral dragon priest to come help you out. So there you have it. That's how you get all of the dragon priest masks. This is Curtis Said. See you next time when we cover more Skyrim. All right, and we are back now, folks. Uh, following our live demo, we have got a whole bunch of GameSpot, GameSpot editors lined up on the couch here. Let's get a couch shot. Come on. Let's see. Is Jan's head in the way? Nope. <laughs> well, I got Carolyn Pettit, Kevin Van Ort, and Maxwell McGee here. Hi, folks. Hello. Hey, welcome. And uh, if you folks have been, have been sort of on Fuse or Twitter or in the community, you may have heard that we're sort of making this episode a gift guide at episode, but not going through and just saying, do you have a shooter fan? Buy them a shooter game. Trying to make it a little more personalized, and so we've solicited uh, you folks to send us your questions. Like, you got someone you want to get a game for? Put it into the chat room. Tell us, and we'll answer. We'll totally give you recommendations, because you guys are knowledgeable. Hell of knowledge about games. I've got a bunch of questions already queued up, so we're going to go through these. And we're going to have some games demoed once we get uh, that sorted out right here. So. Uh, Let's start off with a request, guys. Sure. sure. We've got yeah. one from Girl Draco 7 it's, This is a gift question. I can't decide whether to get my brother Elder Scrolls Skyrim or Mortal Kombat for the 360 for his Christmas gift, since he has an Xbox. Which one would you recommend? Mm. That's a weird... That yeah, that's a weird line Elder up. Scrolls or, Sky, I mean, or Mortal Kombat, mm -hmm. it's... Uh, it's really difficult to pit those two games against each other because, That's true. you know, one, um, I think Skyrim certainly offers a much uh, sort of longer and richer experience for the average player. Mm -hmm. um, so that you might get more kind of bang for your buck with that one. I think that's a good point. Uh, is, there, is this a sibling asking this question? Yes. Yeah. So 
if you want to have multiplayer, obviously, you're going to gonna want to go with Mortal Kombat. Right. That's yeah. true. If you play games with your brother a lot, you're going to... Mortal Kombat... Co- Skyrim's not going to really help yeah. that out. Although, Although, I don't know if ripping, like, each other's arms <laughs> and heads well, no, off no, is really, in like, Mortal, great for... You can for fight against each other, or you can fight uh, on the same okay. team as tag partners. True. Oh, okay. So True. you can do competitive... Little or you can sibling do harmony. So the siblings that rip limbs <laughs> off together... <laughs> stay, stay together? Stay together. Something to consider, though, if you get Mortal Kombat to get the most out of it, it's, it, it, certainly on the 360, you're probably going to want to invest in maybe a fight stick or a fight pad or something like that. So that's a, a consideration. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, you know, maybe if you were getting the PS3 version, you might feel a little more comfortable with the D-pad. Because the D-pad on the 360 controller <sighs> is not it's the a, best. It's, yeah. you know. Uh, all right, so we have also concocted a couple categories of general gift <laughs> recommendations uh, for you folks to enjoy. The first of which is games that uh, games for kids whose parents like really pay attention to ESRB ratings because you all know like some you have a nephew or a niece or you know some young kid who's playing modern warfare and you're like uh, I don't know if I want to get that as a gift for them yeah these gifts these games are ESRB appropriate they are age appropriate and the first one we're going to show off Carol we have here is Skylander Spyro's Adventure that's right now this is a game that uh, certainly speaks to my inner child. Like, I know that the eight year old me would have gone bananas for this. So, the way this game works, I don't know if we can get this in the shot a little more, but so Skylanders, um, it's more than a game. It's, <laughs> it's also, it comes with this portal of power um, that kind of glows with a, with a magic luminescence. And um, the, uh, the other. The, the sort of big kind of gimmick or selling point of Skylanders is the, the toys themselves, the Skylanders. There's, the, the, you, get, you get three with your starter set. You get, of course, the S- Spyro. Spyro is probably the only one that we Yeah, that we the know. only character <laughs> who I think has existed before Skylanders. Oh, okay. uh, Gil Grunt, he's, a, he's a, like a water, he's a fish guy, and a, he has, his element is water. And then there's a guy called Trigger Happy, um, and he's, he shoots these guns. now. The, the, so the crazy thing about this game, <clears throat> sorry about that, the crazy thing about this game is that it's basically kind of a dungeon crawler. As you play through, you, uh, you fight enemies and you actually gain like loot and earn experience and gain new powers and stuff. And all that progress is actually not saved on the, the, your console of choice's hard drive. That progress is saved within your your little Skylander exactly. dude. Exactly. So, um, so, so I'm gonna. Those are pretty neat. Yeah, they're they're they're, I mean, they're definitely nice posed. You know, it's yeah, not yeah, like they're not. Gonna... You cannot an- animate them. I mean, they don't have bendable arms or anything. Um, but uh, but they do have a nice amount of detail, and they're they're pretty cool looking. All right, let's see how this thing works. So yeah, we're loading up a save now, and basically you can. You have all your character information on this thing. Yes. The, I think your progress through sort of the campaign is saved on the hard drive. So, for okay. instance, I've gotten up to cha- chapter two. Mm-hmm. So that's where I'll be able to start from. But, okay, so I'm going to go with Trigger Happy because he's the dude who I've spent some time leveling up. And uh, he's on there. Whoa, whoa, the tech, the tech is freaking... Is, Okay, well... Are we plugged in over here properly? Yeah, is that thing USB'd in properly to the console? It looks like it is. Let me jiggle it a yeah. little bit. Yeah. You might want to try a different one. Okay, well... But but Trigger Happy's my dude. <laughs> Can't find the portal of power. It should Please. be glowing now. I've plugged it into a different socket. We have to press A. Is this person? That's for a player two. All right, you okay. know what? Let me see if Spyro works. Well... Something's up. Shucks! Well, for, for whatever reason, the the... It's oh. not communicating properly. Do you think it's right like a studio now. light thing? It, it, that, that could well be it. It could be that, that, the, that the studio lights are... Come on. Come on, work, buddy. Mm. Well, in any case, so, so while we're maybe looking into that, but, but uh, <laughs> I'll just talk a little bit more about, about what some, something that's kind of cool about this game is that... So, so let's say I have my, my trigger-happy guy here, and I level him up, I get a bunch of powers in him, and you know I, uh, he's the, the character that I want to kind of continue um, building up, and then I, and then my friend maybe has Skylanders also. Okay. Oh, we got Gil Grunt. <laughs> okay, so 
Just cradle him gently there, Maxwell. Okay, so here's. Oh, no, wait, join. Right. Can we join? Can can I join now? Well, well we, we need to be two on this. So get get trigger happy on there. If you Maxwell's can. got the magic touch. Okay. All right. there we go. So for instance, you can see here, trigger happy has that. He's wearing that anvil hat. That's something that that I got for him. Stylish. And that gives him plus five armor. Um, so I'm gonna talk to Flynn here, who's voiced by Patrick Warburton, also known as Cuddy from Seinfeld, and he's. Or the Tick. Uh, yes, or, the the Tick live action show, not he, the not the cartoon. <laughs> well, he's cartoon. Joe on Family Guy. Okay. Anyway, you know, uh -huh. so, so so he's he's the voice. But but one thing that's really cool about these toys, as as I'm saying, is so let's say my friend has Skylanders as well, but he has it uh, for for PS3, or Wii, or even for the 3DS. It, do it doesn't matter. I can take my trigger happy dude over to to my friend's house and play Skylanders on their 3DS with or your PS3 character or cross Wii. platform, no exactly. problem. Exactly, and no continue kidding. earning earning levels and loot and all that all that stuff. So um, the basic gameplay, as hopefully we'll get to see here in a minute, uh, it's 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 very simple but but fun kind of dungeon crawlery. Just run around and and take out a bunch of enemies and and uh, earn experience and get loot and stuff. That looks kind of pretty too. Yeah, it's got a really nice, uh, pleasant, inviting art style. And um, Now, this is my first time playing, so is there anything I should know? It's very, it's it couldn't be simpler. Hard. I mean, especially because you're playing like, a, an early character who won't have many attacks. I shoot with A. I think A, I yeah, a is the your basic attack and B is like your character's uh, special attack. It. Okay. So uh, let's... Uh, I'm just gonna... Oh, uh, hi. Lots of chit chat in these early um, early chapters here, unfortunately. But Come on, go blast these sheep. Let's see if this really is E10 plus and appropriate for kids. <laughs> um, sheep death is appropriate for all ages. The sheep just kind of... There you know, they can take it. Do they actually attack you, or are you just slaughtering them mercilessly? They don't even seem to be dying. Uh, I'm just, I got I'm just this doing key. this. I'm going to open this gate with this key here, and voila. Um, and uh, oh yeah, so so in this this game does not, as far as I know, have box pushing puzzles. Instead, it has turtle pushing puzzles, which is a completely different thing and way cooler. Oh yeah. So. So yeah, thank you. Push the <laughs> turtles into position for me. See, I know there's puzzles when I see one. Yeah. Nicely done, Trigger Happy. And so you play this, this is also a good game for kids because you play it co-op and so exactly. like a parent. Exactly, yeah. But now here's the question, you can, how many people can you play with four? Uh, I, I believe it's actually just, just two at a time. How many fit on that little pad, <laughs> pad of power? You can fit like five more You can fit here. more <laughs> figures on there, but the portal will kind of freak out and say, there's too many Skylanders on the portal of power. But now we have three Skylander toys out here. Yeah, so you get three with the starter set. Okay. Um, and we parents should be aware that, okay, so you can purchase these, well, what Chris is holding here, like separately, pack. which new figures as well as new, these items like the, the pirate a, ship, which I think brings a with it a whole new, a whole new uh, area, like a whole new level that you can go to. That checks out, yeah. So, um, so we got our little so, shark dude, so, yeah. we got our pirates, we got treasure so, and so, uh, some swords, which yeah, are maybe like, magic, like stat boosts or something? I think it is like a, like a stat boost item, yes. And there are apparently 30 plus Skylanders to yes, collect. Yes, so parents should so be aware that your kids, if you know, if you get them this game, they may then be asking you for more Skylanders. Yeah, you may be opening yeah. a, a can of worms that you cannot close until it is choked with tiny little figurines. Yes. Uh, so, just quickly, yeah. other games in this category of parents who oh. are down with the ESRB and want to get some age-appropriate stuff for young kids. Uh, what other recommendations do we have? Sesame Street, Once Upon a Monster, is yeah, a great maybe one. Maybe for the younger set, you know, if you're talking like kids in the five, mm -hmm. five six range. What maybe? do you think, Maxwell? I am cradling the uh, Skylanders. Cradling tree, super and I, hard. I was I was immersed by what was happening on screen. That's what? okay. Uh, Rayman Origins is one. Oh, oh definitely. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. we're doing really, this part. Okay. Really great game. Harry, Harry <laughs> Potter. Um, did we mention that? I've been involved in Skylanders. Yeah, Harry Potter. Years, Lego Harry Potter years uh, five, five through seven. seven. Just came out. Totally yep. good. Yeah. I will say that I think I, I stuck Ultimate Marvel on that list. It is teen rated, you did. but it does have all of the fun and wacky comic book characters that you know and love. It and does, and it's teen. Up. There's no blood. There's no dismemberment. Yeah. Which so I think there's a yeah. little bit a of, lot of games have these but, days. Yeah. 
No Damn it, than, Maxwell. No more than what you'd see on our fine family program. <laughs> Cool. All right. So that's games for kids whose parents follow ESRB ratings. Now, folks, if you're just joining us, jump into the chat room and let us know. We are giving away personalized custom gift game recommendations to you right now. For example, we had uh, Super Poke Bros write in and ask, what is a game for people who have no interest in video games at all? Uh, now, I've got a couple of mm -hmm. our answers written down here. Do you guys remember what you, what you suggested? Uh, if, I, I remember I, what Tom McShay suggested. That's right. Tom McShay contributed as well, and he was talking. If you're, you know, if it's an entry level game, maybe someone who has no interest in games also doesn't. Maybe is because they don't have a lot of skill at games and are a little intimidated. Mario Kart or Super Mario 3D Land are great 3DS titles. Definitely. Any Mario game, really. Is yeah, any of the Mario games are great jumping uh, off points. And, and what's great, yeah, what's great about the Mario games and Super Mario 3D Land is no exception. Is that they're easy enough that I think. Even players new to video games can kind of progress and, and kind of even beat the game. But then they do offer that greater challenge. There's, for instance, like bonus levels, challenge levels that you open up mm -hmm. afterwards, and there's coins to find on each level, which pose a significantly greater challenge for either for you know maybe you're sharing the game with somebody else and they want something a little more kind of hardcore or maybe you you just get naturally better at the game as you play you start off not knowing you know what a butt stomp is and by the end you're like you long know, jumping over precarious chasms to like it, tiny little blocks and whatnot exactly that's well cool. then say you know say you're not into something that's just gamey i mean you could get something like to the moon which is essentially a which is essentially a story told in game form yeah. mm -hmm. and now you have something that's really not you know, a traditional game, um, but you still have something that's paced like a game um, and tells a story like only a game can tell, but without all those pesky game elements to, without to really all get that, in the way. You know, having yeah. to play the game or ch there's yeah, without t the threat of failure because you're not up, their thumbs aren't quick enough. Right. And I think a, sort of a very different game, but somewhat along those lines. I think I think it was Tom who suggested. I could be wrong, but that um, you know maybe heavy a game like Heavy Rain might kind of pull in players who aren't used to, maybe it's, it's the, the, the characters, the story don't seem rich enough in mm -hmm. most games. A game like Heavy Rain, um, I think, has the, just that, that really cinematic look and the kind of richness of character to uh, pull in a lot of people who may, you know, may enjoy movies, for instance, but... but uh, or Law and Order. Or, or criminal procedurals, because Heavy Rain is not a lighthearted game, no, as you might guess no, from no, the no. title. Exactly, it's not. It's not a. It's not a lighthearted game by any means, but it. It is a. It, it's good at telling its story. Cool. All right. So uh, the next category we're going to go on to is, and this one is particularly relevant for me. Uh, this was drawn from my own life inspiration. Uh, game for your parents who just got a game system to stream Netflix. Hmm. <laughs> because let's say uh, streaming video is an awesome thing you can do with game consoles these days, and you know, their PlayStation Three with the new Xbox dashboard, they're focusing more and more on being the entertainment center. Totally. So you got this thing that can play games, but you don't, you didn't buy it to play games, but you can play games. So we got one to show off here, that's movie trivia. It's seen it, night at the movies, yeah, big night, it, big movie time, movie night, Fiesta? I believe is movie yeah, night. seen okay. it, movie night. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is a uh, this is actually a downloadable game. It's it's available on both um, 360 and PS3, and uh, it's uh, a lot of people have probably played games in the Seen It um, series before. But if if you haven't, yeah, it, you'll you'll uh, get a get a look at it here. Um, Let's see if. Now, if I remember correctly, I got completely smoked in yeah. this game earlier this week when okay. we were playing it just for fun. Are we supposed to be watching a clip now? Okay. Yes. Oh. So, Marco, can you turn it up a little bit on that say. monitor down there? It We've got Marco Georgievich standing hey, by. If you don't. <laughs> off, the, off camera, and he's going to be assisting us with uh, volume control and answering questions. She's just real full. And I'm going to talk over this because... That's fine. Hey, if you don't know American Beauty well enough to know what they're saying already, oh. then... Uh, oh, wow. Um. So basically, seen it. I'll, I'll describe it while you guys answer questions. Uh, yes. It's a movie trivia game. They, they have a bunch of different question types. So in this section, you watch a movie clip, and then you answer questions about it. Either what you said, what you saw, what the characters said, what they were wearing, various scenic elements, uh, or you know who the actresses are, for example. And then 
You buzz it. You you don't have to actually buzz in in this one. You just have to choose your answer. Well, there's I, I think there's two ways you can uh, you can play it. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's just this question type, but you can definitely. Um, you can also make it so you have to buzz exactly. in in order to see the answers. Correct. And so it's just different levels of you know how trivia gamey you want to make it. Right. But there's other categories, and I think we'll move on to ones shortly that. You know, just basically test movie knowledge in a variety of ways, and it's a, I mean, it's, the barrier for this game is non-existent. I mean, it's, if anything, it's testing your movie knowledge, not your ability to press the correct we button. We all chose the wrong uh, Wow, that was bad, guys. Yeah, right, right <laughs> after I hit Bugsy, I, I knew it was the grifters. But to go was... back to the, the question types, there are questions that you can buzz in for, but if yeah, you're yeah. the player who buzzes in, you have, like, a really fast time limit to block in your answer, whereas the other, the other contestants have a little bit longer. But, but if you are, if you get your, if you buzz in and then you get yeah, the answer correct, quickly, you yes. get a big point bonus. Risk okay. Reward. Complete the quote. And so this game, you can, we're playing on the PS3 right now. It's also available on the 360. You download it from PSN or Xbox Live Arcade. I think it's like 10 bucks. And yes. uh, you can play for a little while oh. before you see repeat questions. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also, it, there's going to be a DLC that brings in t totally different movies. Like, I, I believe the first DLC pack that's been announced is all like sci-fi related movies and questions. Um, mm -hmm. uh, um, and you know, then there's other theme packs to follow, so you can definitely um, expand the amount of content. So if your parents end up liking this, it's you know, their yeah. next purchase once that comes out is going to be a no-brainer. The only potential drawback would be that in order to play with four players, you do need four controllers. Mm -hmm. And typically, if you buy you buy a console, you just get the one. This is true. Um, but you know, you, that's a reason to get more controllers, which then <laughs> is a gateway towards other multiplayer gaming experiences. Yeah. Other stuff in this category, what do we have? Uh, similar to this, uh, but a little bit more humor focused is and, You Don't Know and Jack. risque, maybe. Also risque, yeah. yeah. This this may have some rated R movies in it, but the- I'm sure it doesn't have the offensive content of no. said movies. Yes, if, you're, if your parents are squeamish or easily uh, made uncomfortable by body language, I would not recommend You Don't Know Jack. However, if they appreciate it, that game is totally great. Yes. Uh, also, we had some suggestion for Just Dance 3. If your parents like to like to get off the yeah, couch, you know, and, dance yeah, in the privacy of your living room, uh, definitely. You know, those are the kind of games that are very easy to, very easily accessible. I mean, you dance along with a guy on screen, you answer trivia. This is stuff that doesn't require being comfortable with thumbsticks or with a first-person view or any of the more intimidating elements of uh, video games. All right. While you guys answer this, I'm going to have you answer another request from Mudkip Master Thirty. I'm someone who generally, who greatly enjoys arcade-style racers. Games I've played a lot of as of late include Need for Speed Hot Pursuit mm -hmm. and Driver San Francisco, but I don't find much enjoyment out of simulation racers like Forza or Gran Turismo. Are there any games you can recommend? Uh, I'm also open to games on previous platforms. So maybe going back a little while, I mean, uh, I imagine an arcade racing fan like Mudkip uh, would have played Burnout 3, Burnout Revenge, Burnout Paradise, but if not, I mean, those are all time those classic. Are excellent. Uh, yeah. The Motorstorm. Motorstorm Apocalypse, for sure. Motorstorm Apocalypse for, sure. Apocalypse the same, for the PlayStation the 3. Mm -hmm. Kevin, you reviewed uh, Split Second last Split year. Split Second's right? super fun. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's a good one. And Blur, Tom McShay added as well, which is kind of like a. Realistic kind of, Mario Kart. It's Mario like, Kart with real cars. With real cars, real cars yeah. and you're on like actual real world tracks, but you're also like collecting power ups. So mm -hmm. yeah. So those are some good arcade racers. Uh, next question: What do I get for my 65 year old mother who has every single Zelda game <clears throat> ever made? Well, if it's, I mean, if she's into Zelda uh -huh. and you want to continue with the Zelda, I mean, two things jump to mind. Okami Ooh. is one. Yeah, very yeah. much in the mold of Zelda. Yeah, it's the best Zelda game that doesn't have Zelda in the title. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's 3D Dot Game Heroes. You know, so more like an old, the old school Zelda. Yeah, games. very old school Zelda. Um, and I, I actually thought of uh, it's not Zelda like really, but for some reason Animal Crossing jumped to mind as something that's kind of adventury and laid back. Okay. Um, that that I think. Anybody can get an Animal Crossing. I think that's why it came up. It's like everybody loves Animal Crossing. True. 
Also, I, well. I don't know how hardcore this guy's mother is, but I'll also throw out uh, Darksiders. Is also Ooh, a Darksiders. Yeah. Ooh, very Zelda. Zelda. I like Darksiders. Very much a Zelda. She's into angels and demons. And yeah. It's what the, you know, the apocalypse really. and all that good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> all right, while we get our next game set up here, we've got another request from Jaeger Zero. For someone that hasn't played a Metal Gear Solid game, would you recommend the Metal Gear Solid HD compilation? See, my feeling is, I mean, I actually still love the original Metal Gear Solid. I know mm -hmm. a lot of people feel like that's a game you can't go back to. I totally... You disagree? I, I disagree, personally, and I feel like... As awesome you need to like dust off your place to PS1. You to can play download that? it on, on the PSN and play okay. it on your PS3. But uh, to me, I mean, Metal Gear Solid, it, the whole series is awesome, but it's not for everyone. And I might say, to me, maybe test the waters with the first Metal Gear Solid. See if you know, see if the the, the over the top storytelling, the characters, the whole stealth mechanic is something that appeals to you before investing in the HD collection. But I Maxwell, did you have an agree or a dissenting opinion? I was going to say, I do agree with Carolyn that like the HD collection is a good starting point. For me, I started with, with two. Oh. And so going back to one can be a little rough. So sure. I'd say if it's somebody who hasn't played any Metal Gear Solid, then starting out with like two or three in the HD collection, it might be an easier entry okay. point since the, the series at that point is just a little more refined than it was in one. And I would even point out that Tom <laughs> McShay, who had never played a Metal Gear Solid game before Metal Gear Solid 4, that was his game of the year, and he thought he thought it was amazing. Of course, I love Metal Gear Solid 4, having you know said it was a ten. But yes, you um, Metal Gear Solid has some will spoil for that you, game. though. If that's it the will, one you start it will with, spoil you if you start it's, there. It's real, it's really easy but to don't, like, pick up. But don't worry if you don't like know what's going on. I think it really is. Even though a lot of it's very convoluted, I don't think that you'll feel like you're being left out or that. You know, you might not pick up the intricacies, but the strokes are broad enough. But just kind of go with it. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll it'll pick you up and carry you along eventually. Yeah, pretty much. All right, so for our next category, uh, we're talking, you know, when you read a game guide, you get a lot of, um, you know, f very big name recommendations. You know, Skyrim, that's easy to recommend. You know, a lot of the, the top rated games that are heavily advertised, those are easy recommendations. But what if you have a friend who is too cool for school or into the stranger things in life or who regards mainstream gaming as something distasteful or just wants to play something really bizarre and off the beaten path, well, for that friend, there's Catherine. And we've got that <laughs> booting up right now. Maxwell's got the controller. Uh, we talked a lot about Catherine when it came out earlier this year uh, because it, it certainly makes an impression. Here we see Maxwell in the confession booth as Vincent, the protagonist, answering questions from the mysterious voice. Uh, this is a short little part of the game, but it sort of plays into this mechanic that eventually determines what ending you're going to get. And it's not like a, a right or wrong answer, a, a good or bad answer. There, there's a lot more gray area because it's kind of strange. So do you prefer being in the quiet or loud? This, this part right here is something I thought was really interesting. I didn't realize it was in the game until I loaded it up last night. Just like that it shows you, because it asks you these these basically yes or no questions or these either or questions, but then they also surveyed a bunch of people and they show you the, uh, the survey results here. Well, I think it's the people who have played the game already and what they have answered. Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, and so you, what'd you go with, Maxwell? I did, I did Quiet Places. You like it quiet? I like Quiet Places. All right, now, a lot of Catherine, Kevin, we're gonna see the <laughs> puzzle mechanic here and that's gonna be pretty visually apparent to you folks in just a second as Maxwell tries to escape the prison of despair. <laughs> They'll have to focus on what's going I know, on, I'm so I'm, I'm happy to provide I've not commentary. Done this one yet. Yeah, so you can, folks, you can puzzle out what uh, the, the puzzle gameplay element of Catherine is here as Maxwell demonstrates and hopefully does not fail. Uh, <laughs> oh lord, you have to be at a boss. Oh man, am I really? Yes, you are okay. totally at a boss. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, I'm gonna put my thinking cap it's, on. It's the first boss, you focus. Uh, now Kevin, Tell us about uh, some other parts of Catherine that we're not seeing right here. So here's some of the, so what you're, you know, one of the most important things, of course, is you have to push and pull blocks around so that you can get to the top, yes. right? Um, and then, of course, you get to things like that, and, and you, th there are certain power-ups. So, for example, he can now make a block normal because you see some of these blocks are crumbling under his feet. Um, he can use that, that power-up of sorts to turn a block normal, mm -hmm. um, but you can only hold on to one of those at a time. You see that pillow up there, that's actually a continue. But so one of the oh, things no. Maxwell is going to need to do, he can actually recover from this, um, is you, sometimes you need to make steps. You know, so right now he's going to work very hard, and, and you can also screw yourself. 
the good news I think is he might, you also he might rewind, be, uh, so you might want to... Oh, I hit the oh, rewind oh, button, but then I got wait. taken out right there. And so, of course, this boss will skewer time. you with a fork. And now love is over. Yeah. But, <laughs> in, you know, when you're not doing this, um, mm -hmm. you know, you go through these... This is nighttime. This is Vincent's nightmares. And basically, his real life is sort of represented, um, you know, in his nightmares. You know, as things get more and more stressful, he's got a girlfriend named Catherine with a K. Okay, mm -hmm. but he Not also meets this seductress named Catherine with a C, and so now during the daytime he's, you know, he's trying hard to kind of juggle these two women, and his fears of the day are being represented during the nighttime. But as you discover, and I'm not going to give anything away, but as you discover going through this game, um, things aren't necessarily what they appear. And, and so, um, but you know, this is a dude, of course, that's, you know, in his underwear and his dreams with sheep's horns. Um, so this is probably the... <laughs> that, should, that should tip you off. Tip you off that not everything is as it appears. Push the block over! Oh, oh that's right, because you can push edge them and they'll hang on the yes. edge. Or yeah, whatever the, they call the, it. The, the lady will go, edge, edge, edge. And there's blue edge. sparks. And there's a checkpoint up there if you can get there. Okay. Now's the time to make your help, staircase down. Let me think down. this through. Okay. I'm going to need... Down one at a time. There you go. This one out. Yep. No. Nope. Uh, nope. No, not that one. Go back. Okay. The, and the so when you're on your right, there you go. This. Oh, that won't help either. No, that won't help me either. This little like this looks a little crazy, and this is a little stressful. And Maxwell's know. about to get stabbed again by this fork. Oh. It's worth uh, pointing out this game is hard. Yeah, it's you know. very hard. I mean, he had, he could go back. He could, and True. if you play it on easy, it's a little bit more. Forgiving that way, but yep. you're I'm playing on get, normal rather than you're gonna have to get some serious uh, puzzle sharpness if you want to get through this. But it's also, you know, there, there are those lull times when you've gotten out of the nightmare where you are sort of, you know, the gameplay stuff is talking to your buddies in the bar or reading your text yeah. messages and choosing how to respond, and it's just it's a really uh, unique sort of way to to do day night gameplay. I yeah. mean, it's. It's a pretty fascinating game, well loved by many a GameSpot editor. Uh, other ideas for people who appreciate stranger games? Shadows of the Damned. Shadows of the Damned. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Third person shooter, descending um, into hell as Garcia Hotspur Demon Hunter. With oh, yeah. your friend and companion Johnson, the talking skull Demon slash skull. all your weapons. Shadows of the Damned. Uh, one Child of Eden. Child of yep. Eden. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt Chris. No, not at all. Yeah. And you can play that one. That was sort of showcased as a Kinect title, but you can play that with a controller, Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. And it's also on PS3 now. It's on PS3 yep. as well. Uh, one that Maxwell showed off on the show not too long ago, The Binding of Isaac, is a downloadable PC game uh, which by the creators of Super Meat Boy, which also tough, pretty dark. Uh, if you want to look back, you can check out our demo of it. But about 10 bucks, right? Yeah. Yeah, that one's pretty cheap. It's ch it's cheap, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and what else do we have here? Disgaea 4. Oh, yeah. Disgaea 4, yeah. super funny uh, turn-based uh, strategy game. And El Shaddai, Ascension of the Metatron. Yeah. Gorgeous platformer. Uh, just really cool art style. Pretty solid combat as well. And, and, and totally. wild concept. And bizarro, wild, biblical concept, etc. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, all right. We have just we have a couple more questions uh, from recommendations folks are curious about, and we've got one or two more categories to get through. But we're going to take a break and go over to the news real quick to get caught up on what's happening around the world of the video games. <laughs> Welcome to your GameSpot News Update for Thursday, December 8th. Tom Agrino here to provide you with a look at the very best in news for the week without a crazy British accent. So, Nintendo's had a bit of a wonky morning. Wired ran an article late last night indicating Shigeru Miyamoto, creator of such franchises as Super Mario Bros. and Legend of Zelda, would be retiring from his position as chief creative at the company. That is, retiring from his position, but not from the company. As Miyamoto said, he simply wants to get back to being a game designer and working with other young designers. Of course, investors didn't get much past the word retiring, and Nintendo's stock promptly did a barrel on fears that the company's design genius was on the outs. Nintendo quickly moved to calm those fears, refuting the report with a, he has no intention of stepping down, please do not be concerned. Later, Nintendo flat out denied Miyamoto's position within the company would be changing at all. So what have we learned from this? Either A, Miyamoto needs a seriously high profile protege, 
Or B, Nintendo needs to acquire a highly skilled taxidermist. Probably the former. Probably. Nintendo wasn't the only console maker to see folks flip out this week. On Tuesday, Microsoft rolled out its annual fall update to Xbox Live, which, among other changes, introduced Microsoft's Metro design interface. That's Metro as in public transport, not fashionably dressed, by the way. At least I think so, I don't actually know. Anyway, the change also came with a tweaked terms of use contract where Xbox Live users must give up their right to take Microsoft to court or be part of a class action suit should they suffer some grievance while using the service. The new clause dramatically limits Microsoft's liability to the price of a single month of Xbox Live service. In the case of gold memberships, that's about $5. For silver, that's a big fat Zipola. Oh, and to be clear, if you want to use Xbox Live, you've got to agree to these terms. Heck, considering the update went live on Tuesday, you've probably already agreed to these terms. Okay, that does it for today. For more on these stories and other news headlines, head on over to news.gamespot.com. And we're back. The final category uh, of our sort of impromptu on the spot holiday gift guide episode is going to be. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Ah, yes. Games that you can buy for people, even if you don't have a lot of money. Because, let's face it, a lot of video games are expensive. Uh, but a lot of video games are not expensive. And some of them are even free, like this next one that Kevin's about to show off. Yeah, this is, um, this is a one-man dealie um, made with Game Maker. So this, this is called Hyper Princess Pitch uh -huh. um, by uh, Daniel Remar, I think is his name. Um, sorry, Daniel, if I got your name wrong. I'm, always, I'm pretty bad with, with the pronunciation. But... Yeah, this is um, this is a kind of a, you know um, I don't know we were talking about Smash TV. This is kind of you know a top down you know kind of everything coming at you at once sort of shooter. Um, but its 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 hook is that you're a you're a princess, and as it turns out, yeah. Mecha Santa Who doesn't want to be a princess. I know, right? But this is not your typical princess. You know, Mecha Santa wants to distribute his presence with his robotic elves. Okay, that um, sounds like an okay so thing. I mean, they're just streamlining the North Pole process. You know. But she's spoiled. She's never gotten presents from Mecha Santa, so she's going to just make sure that everybody's punished. Oh, she's that kind of princess. Yeah, so she's, she's a spoiled princess. So here, here you go. This is a, the, the elves are planning to spread joy and presents all over the world. The good Mecha Santa. But she didn't get any presents. Look at her go. So she takes her, her, her pet cat strike, and off they go. That's, that's all the intro you need, right there. And here you go. Uh, busting into the North Pole compound to, wow, really <laughs> destroy some elves. Right. So it's, so oh it's a game goodness. in, you know, in the holiday spirit. It's got the holiday theme, yeah. so it's maybe yeah, totally. all the more appropriate for, for Christmas. It is, and we actually had a request from a user uh, asking for Doomguard 3, wondering for a, a holiday-themed kind of game, yeah. uh, you know, Christmas or Halloween themes. Costume Quest, Costume Quest is a sure. great one. Folklore, he mentioned, or she, uh, but he... Doomguard 3 is also wondering, is there something that's, you know, holiday-themed and appropriate that doesn't involve just shooting people or zombies? <sighs> oh, gosh, that is actually a and hard one. Tough. Fortunately, Tom McShay has come to the rescue oh, with, the, with the unexpected suggestion of Magic Orbs, oh. Orbs with a Z, yes, uh, which is a downloadable PSN game uh, that, yeah, it's sort of like an Arkanoid thing, a brick breaker, mm -hmm. but it's... Uh, got these lush visual, or at least more complicated visuals than just bricks. So you're busting through seasonally is it decorated a, is areas. Is it a picture of Santa and or a Christmas tree? No, I think it's like an actual, it's like a little environment where there's like trees and huts and stuff like that and you're rolling this ball to just break it all up. Can I, can I suggest some things that may be a little, like a little less appropriate? But see, I have a thing about snow. Okay. And to me, snow and the holidays go hand in hand. Yes. Um, so may I suggest games with lots of snow? So we could take Skyrim as a Skyrim recent example. Skyrim has so much snow. But how about the original Lost Planet? Ooh. Or uh, I would say, uh, in that vein, Batman Arkham City, a game that I certainly feel the chill uh, of, of, of Arkham City while I'm playing. Mm -hmm. The snowflakes falling all around you definitely does the cold thing very well. So there you go, Doomguard 3. Also, bonus points for mentioning that level in Resonance of Fate, where instead of, where you use the combat system to deliver presents to children, and you like do all your elaborate combat moves and just end up chucking presents. Uh, that was awesome, and Tom McShay will eternally love you for mentioning that. All right, we got a couple more here to get through. Uh, would it be worth it to buy the Ico and Shadow of Colossus HD pack for a friend who already played them and loved them on his PS2? If that friend oh, loved them, I yes. would say I would say yes. I mean, I think that, and I think Tom 
Tom's big point about the the HD collection is that the frame rate is much improved, and that makes the experience of kind of tackling the uh, the colossi makes it much better. Much better. Yeah. Let's jump back to Hyper Princess yeah. pitch real quick Man, here. Man, you know what? Just you when Kevin has been smote by the giant uh, Robo Claws Slay of Doom. Boom. Oh, there nice you go. work. There That's you go. Right. Boss is down. Hyper Princess pitch. This is a PC game that you can download for it's zero dollars. Zero dollars. Find it on the, the best number internet. of dollars. Uh, some other stuff that's good. Uh, maybe cheap games as gifts. What do you guys think? Um, the Binding of Isaac Binding is a of really Isaac. good option. It's about five dollars, and mm -hmm. there's just there's a bevy of, of content to explore there between all the different items you can find, and like once you beat the game, it opens up new levels that you can explore, and it gets really hard. So chances are you'll be you'll be going back to it again and again. Steam. And, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was gonna say Steam and good old games and places like that are always always have sales going on. Um, uh, one game yeah. that appears to be on sale. I mean, Terraria is yeah, certainly I, I, lots I, of bang for your buck. I bought buck. Terraria for two fifty on Steam the other day, and that is a game. I mean, apparently, once you start, like once you start, you are in that game for like sixty plus hours, for hours at least. and hours and hours. So I'm almost scared to start it, but I think. I couldn't pass up that value of 250. How so there's a Frozen lot of Synapse? ways to get Frozen Synapse. There's yeah. a lot of ways to get a lot of bang for your buck if you're buying for people who play on PC. But what about console players? What I mean, what if you want to buy a gift for someone who's got a console, do you guys yeah. have any suggestions? I think one of the best ways to, you know, one of the ways you can give someone just a little bit of money to get them a game is a gift card for Xbox Live or PlayStation Network. 10 bucks will buy them a downloadable game of their choice. Because I don't think those services have ways that you can gift games the way that Steam does. Yeah. So you can't actually buy it yourself, but if you buy them that card, yeah. then they can use it That's, whenever they want. I think um, I think you can also, at times, certain games you can buy on like Amazon, and you'll, uh, and you'll get a code that you could give the person. If you know, like, I want to buy this specific game mm -hmm. for the person, you might check Amazon um, to see if they're selling it. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, the, the gift cards are definitely a great way to go. Yeah. All right, let's burn through th some of these last questions. I promised people on Fuse that I would answer these, and doll garn it, I'm gonna. Gunblade Hero, a friend of mine really likes JRPGs, more specifically the traditional turn-based ones, but he only has a 360, which is lacking in JRPGs besides Final Fantasy 13. Which ones would you recommend? Eternal Sonata. Boom. Um, gorgeous game. Um, Residents of Fate, Tom McShay would definitely tell him. Mm -hmm. um, how about uh, Lost Odyssey? Lost Odyssey. Lost Odyssey. And uh, what about, uh, oh, there's another one. I like Last Remnant a whole lot, but you have to do a lot of frame rate forgiveness for that one. Mm. So, so you need just, some patience. You need to have some patience for that. Um, those are the ones that, that jump immediately to And mind. I see Marco off stage mouthing Star Ocean. Star Ocean. Oh, gosh, yeah, Star Ocean 4. There you go, Gunblade Hero. Uh, Boom and Granny. What console should I get my 25-year-old gamer daughter for Christmas who currently owns a 360 and a Wii? Uh, <laughs> I have it on good authority. She would appreciate a PS3. Uh, now we've got Frag Kitten wanting to know about her parents. And uh, as you community folks know, this is actually Cynthia, our community maven here at GameSpot. Uh, her parents play a lot of video games, and so this is a good question. Um, they have played a lot of games. They are definitely have no shyness about h hardcore games, as you mentioned earlier, Maxwell. Uh, they they have a lot of mainstream titles, though. They like to play cooperative stuff. Any recommendations for the grandparents or, or parents, rather? Sorry, Cynthia's parents. <laughs> uh, any recommendations oh. for them? It's, so they they li they like mainstream games. They do, yeah. But they played a lot of they them. Played already. a lot of them. All yeah. right. Uh, Portal 2? The, yeah, the cooperative campaign oh, yeah. in Portal 2 I, mean, I think definitely should be top of the list. It's yeah. mm -hmm. hilarious, challenging. Yeah, and, and, um, and just so wonderful in the way that it requires yeah. you to it, it does a great job of working in both players and yeah. making you both feel rewarded. Um, another g great co-op co game, a, a, a game that has great co-op that I don't think got maybe the attention it deserved, Fear 3. Yeah. Super, you know, kind of yeah. grisly, horror -y, hardcore shooter, but... In the uh, in, when you play co-op, you play as two different characters who have very different, very complementary powers, mm -hmm. which is just great fun. You know, one of you has is a kind of spectral and can s suspend uh, an enemy in the air while the uh, point man shoots that that helpless enemy, or you know, you one of you can like take possession of enemies. All kinds of ways that you can 
work together. And oh, Cynthia, you also mentioned they can Sorry. be on the pretentious side. I'm sure you meant that in a loving way. <laughs> uh, Tom McShay says, uh, Heavy Rain, LA Noir, Metal Gear Solid 4. Those are all sort of in the, you can be proud to talk about, or yeah. about them among gamers with cred type <laughs> category. Uh, and that'll pretty much do it. Uh, there was one more from Jaeger Zero asking about indie computer games. And we're going to go with Terraria for you, buddy. <laughs> get, get in it. Um, that's going to bring us close to the end of the show. Let's flash over here. Santa has, is getting destroyed by Kevin. Mecha Santa, no less. Kevin, why do you hate Christmas so much? Yeah. I despise Cause Christmas. Because he didn't get any why presents. You well, you know, I'm, now that I live out in San Francisco, I kind of miss snow, you know? <laughs> All this um, talk so of gift giving, sorry to interrupt Kevin, but uh, I have this box next to me that I'm really dying to show off. We have been provided uh, with an awesome, awesome Forza 4 gift pack from the folks at Turn 10 or Microsoft? What do we think, Jen? I think Microsoft. In any case, let's take a look at what we've got here. Of course, we have the game Forza Motorsport 4 for the 360. Uh, we have the wireless speed wheel as well, which Looks sort of like someone rejiggered your Xbox controller, because that's what happened. And then we have the system itself, the Xbox 360 Connect Special Edition. Uh, I'm going to pull this out because the case mod looks really cool. Uh, if I can get the box open without knocking it over. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Let's get that off. And uh, can you see through the plastic? This is your Forza Motorsport. Ooh. Ooh, yes, thank you. That is appropriate. Uh, actually, I'm going to take this out real quick and try not to get too many fingerprints on the Lucky Winners console, but you see this all over is Forza branded, and it looks really slick. And this, of course, is a nice brand spanking new Xbox 360, which you can win along with the Kinect, and of course it comes with Kinect Adventures. Yep. yep. Uh, all this can be yours if you answer the following question. Forza Motorsport 4's fictional Bernese Alps circuit lies between which two factual river valleys? Now, one answer, you answer, you name those two river valleys by sending us an email to onthespot at gamespot.com. Include your name and address so we can ship you this, and one lucky winner is going to be all forced out for this holiday. Uh, we've got a couple download codes as well to give out. So. For those of you who want to get your hands on Wanted Corp, a new uh, shoot 'em up type top down shooter. Yeah, top down shooter. Thir well, third person, third person kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for PSN, <laughs> tell me. I thought I could clear that up. What are the names of the bounty hunters in Wanted Corp? Send that one in to on the spot at gamespot.com. Of course. And finally, we've got a serious Sam question for some serious Sam download codes for assorted serious Sam games. What is the name of the evil alien leader in the Serious Sam series? Send us all these answers to onthespot at gamespot.com and we will totally hook you up with some free stuff that you can, you know, keep for yourself or give away because tis the season. And speaking of which, GameSpot is broadcasting a live fundraiser for Child's Play tonight from San Francisco. It's called Umlaud and we're going to be there kicking it off at 6.30 going all through the night. Basically, uh, they've we got a bar set up. They've rented it out for the night. They are having uh, t up over 26 bands come in and play, rock bands. They're going to be up playing, rocking their hearts out, trying to solicit donations for Child's Play Charity, a charity which gives games and game systems to children in children's hospitals to help them with their convalescence. We're going to be broadcasting it all night, and it's sure to be a very entertaining time. Come back at 6.30, we're going to start broadcasting then. And we've also going to have a donate button there so you can add your contribution to help folks in the hospital, you know, enjoy the, the holidays a little bit more. Because, you know, holidays are about giving, not just receiving. Am I right, guys? Absolutely. So true. Right. No. So right. Uh, you, are, you are just the worst. I know, I am the worst. Hey. <laughs> oh, are you talking about Kevin? He's still playing no, no, this thing. Well, I'm still playing this my This is hard. Thing, this is so. getting tricky. There are... <laughs> A lot more sleighs now bombarding you. Yeah. <laughs> Name of this, this game is again, the evil Kevin. Of Hyper Princess Pitch. This Hyper is the evil Princess of the holidays you see right here on your screen. <laughs> All right, folks. And tomorrow, just one, one or two more things to tell you about. We are uh, having a. If you have been keeping track of the controller, we are getting down to the wire and getting close to that $50,000 prize. We're having a live recap of the series tomorrow, featuring Miss Violence and a few others. That's starting at noon. And uh, we're also launching right around now a contest to win a trip to E3 2012. We're going to get you there. We're going to get you in to see all sorts of fun games. 
And uh, keep an eye on GameSpot for that announcement. We're going to be starting that promotion very, very soon. The contest page is live, I'm being told right now. Where can they find that, Jan? GameSpot.com? In the forums? In the forums. So click on the forums tab from the top of the page. And get your entry in, because you could totally win a trip to E3 2010 and see us all wearing the same kind of t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, that's bringing us to the end of our show. Do you guys have anything else you want to uh, mention game-wise, holiday-wise, uh, before we close it out? Bah humbug. <laughs> Delightful. <laughs> Kevin Van Ord, ladies and gentlemen, along with Maxwell McGee and Carolyn Pettit, thank you so much for your help on this episode. Thanks to Marco for a back little backstagery <laughs> and all you guys back there. Uh, hope you folks enjoyed the show. Feel free to contact us all on Twitter or on Fuse for any personalized game recommendations you want. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.